Do you see them as having, particularly in the software space, right, a clear lead in the field of generative AI? I think they certainly do have a lead. Uh, they they were first out of the gate with uh, GPT 3.5, uh, then 4.0, and uh, just a, a month or so ago, they added uh, GPT 4V, which is adding vision to their product. Um, they're also you know scaling very strongly from a revenue perspective. Uh, but I think they are not the only game in town. Uh, certainly, we're seeing. Um, uh, features from Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, Amazon, um, all of the cloud players are really adding AI into their platforms. Uh, I think AI is going to be the next battleground uh, for those large companies. Um, it is a, almost a bewildering array of options. Uh, so ThoughtWorks, as a technology consulting firm, we advise our clients on how they can build technology to solve their biggest challenges. Um, and uh, AI is certainly in that list. Uh, we worked with one client uh, where we were uh, helping them with their AI strategy. And uh, before we'd even got started, uh, they showed us 270 ideas for how Gen AI might improve their business and, and create value for them. Um, and so, you know, clearly having ideas is not the difficult bit. Um, it's figuring out uh, which of those ideas are really going to create um, business value for you and, and then uh, doing a proof of value and then getting that into production. Uh, something that we're seeing a lot happening is that companies are able to do a proof of concept, but they don't really have uh, the machinery in place to take that through into production at scale, delivering value. And so that's an area where we can help. Well, a company having 270 ideas, I don't know that there are 270 large language models on the market to choose from. Maybe there are that many. I think we're talking about those with sort of tens of billions of parameters, you know, from GPT 3.5, Llama 2, the work that Anthropic, Inflection AI are doing, things like that. Today is the OpenAI Dev Conference. And, and when a company holds, a, holds an event like this, Mike, what is it that you want to hear from them? Well, so I would expect to hear um, more about model features, so uh, new features that they're introducing, maybe more vision, uh, maybe some code generation, uh, maybe also multimodal models. Um, so that's a model that can work uh, across uh, text and speech and image and possibly video, uh, both for input and output, and can kind of fluidly move between those modes of interaction. Uh, I'd expect to see greater clarity around costs uh, of using these models. One of the problems with generative AI is that the costs are unpredictable, um, and, and that can be a, a, a serious barrier to uh, getting these things into production and creating value from them. Uh, I might also expect to see uh, some words around safety features. Uh, safety, of course, is a huge factor in AI. Uh, we put out some consumer research a couple of weeks ago uh, where we interviewed 10,000 consumers about their attitudes towards AI, and we found that more than 90% of people uh, had concerns about uh, data privacy, their data usage, um, and whether companies are being uh, responsible and transparent with AI. Yes. And actually, I really think um, there's something there, you know, uh, taking a privacy forward stance can be a brand enhancing move. We're just showing uh, on the screen, you know, the, the cloud provider perspective, because ultimately, if you're a company that wants to invest in AI, what we're talking about here is compute. And you mentioned the costs associated with that. I've reported that, that OpenAI will likely book a billion dollars of revenue this year. But there is a concern about the, the competitive pricing to bring in customers and then the long-term profitability, because crunching the data is proving expensive. How closely do you look at that, Mike? Well, I think it's difficult to look at it closely because those figures are uh, closely guarded secrets from those companies. But reading the tea leaves, I would say that um, I don't think they really know whether their pricing is where it needs to be to make the money. You've seen both uh, Google and Microsoft uh, with Duet and Office 365 add Gen AI features to their productivity tool suites. Um, and that's uh, kind of in the $30 per person per month zone. Uh, I don't think they actually know whether they're going to make money from that. It's something that's going to shake out in the long term. Rumors around ChatGPT5, of course, uh, say that OpenAI is really focused on efficiency. And efficiency really means uh, bringing down the cost to run that. Uh, I think another option uh, that should not be overruled uh, is to uh, look at the open source world. Um, there's been amazing progress uh, with models that are less big, smaller. You know, you can run them yourself, you can run them in-house, and that's especially useful if you want to keep tight control over your data and, and not actually use a cloud provider for your AI.